from the Mercy One Studio. Support for Faith on Trial and Iowa Catholic Radio provided in part by Imogene Ingredients. Our freedom of conscience and religion is being challenged by laws and regulations imposed by secular society. It's time to hear from the top Christian litigators in the nation who have come forward to tell us the truth and help us defend our faith. Hear ye, hear ye. All rise. Faith on Trial with Defender of the Faith, Deacon Mike Mano is in session. A good Thursday morning from the Iowa State Fair. This will be our last broadcast from here. Next week we're going to be back in our studios. I'm Deacon Mike Mano, and I'm here with Gina Knoll. Gina, how are you this morning? I'm well. I'm very well. It's so much fun to be out here. Yes. It does make it a little more complicated. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we we we, we, do, we delayed two minutes the opening of our program so that they could get in the national anthem here. It was beautiful. So and yeah, beautiful they did a good job, but we didn't want to be talking over it, so that's what we did. Your patience for us, yes. Yes. Uh, so some things in the news, maybe I saw that um, Senator Langton, Lang. Ford, Langford, yes. Langford, from, uh, Republican from Oklahoma, U.S. Mm-hmm. Senator, been doing a good job of really trying to protect our, our rights in the in the area of uh, medical procedures and abortion. He, uh, and the Hyde Amendment. Yes, right. he's been doing his best to protect the Hyde Amendment, which right. allows no federal funding right. uh, for the... Um, uh, for the te- any for abortion, mm-hmm. and then the uh, Weldon Amendment protecting the uh, conscience rights uh, for, uh, of our doctors and medical providers. Right, and I just wrote an article for the Wander about uh, the betrayal of conscience rights, and uh, you know the the Trump administration had gone to bat for a nurse that had been forced to perform That's an right. abortion. I think we talked the about Depart- that last time. The Justice Department has been and, working hard and, on that. And, and the Justice Department under Joe Biden made a flip-flop. They withdrew the complaint, and uh, there's there's no remedy now for this nurse who's been traumatized for having to perform. She uh, was perform. forced to help. She was forced to help. It. And the investigation by the um, HHS, uh, Department of Civil Rights, found that there were at least 10 nurses in that uh, hospital that were forced to f- perform over 20 abortions uh, un- under their policy that if you don't do it, you can be fired. Yes, and I just don't understand that. Um, what they do is they, they, they tell them, you know, you're abandoning a patient, and abandoning a patient is a cause for revocation of the license, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's what they do. And so this woman has been traumatized, so that's my column that I just turned it in sort of here in a week or two. In a week yeah. or two we yeah. can follow it. Yes, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about it more on the show because that, that's a big case. I that think. that yeah. is, that is. We might want to get a hold of some of those people and see if we can get them on the program too. Not necessarily the nurse, but one of the the attorney that is was in charge of the Office of Civil Rights for the HHS was... Um, uh, I, I forget what his first name was, Severino was his last name. We've had him on the program several years ago before he uh, took his job with the, uh, with the federal government. And what he did was uh, he uh, turned everything over to the Justice Department, let them sue. When the Biden uh, administration came in, they told him they wanted him to resign. Well, he had three years left in his term, and he said, no, I'm not going to resign. They fired him. Wow. Oh, wow, that seems so wrong. Well, there's more to that story well, yeah, to cover in another <laughs> program, I'm sure. And, well, and speaking of Right to Life, we're going to have Maggie DeWitty, Executive Director of Iowans for Life, with us in just a few moments. We're going to talk to her. She's been out at the fair every day. She's at home right now. Uh, we let her, ready to we, come we, 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 we let her. We let her sleep in today because she's going to be out tonight. She's been uh, working hard. Yeah, she's, she's been working hard. She's got a lot going on, on at her booth and, and with the organization. We'll be anxious to catch that's up That's right. With her. Do you have a prayer to open us up with? I do. A prayer Good. for peace, which, given all that's going on in the world today, this prayer is very important. So yeah, especially for Afghanistan. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So pray with me in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of peace, bring your peace to our violent world. Peace in the hearts of all men and women, and peace among the nations of this earth. Turn to your way of love those whose hearts and minds are consumed with hatred. Strengthen us in hope and give us the wisdom and courage to work tirelessly for a world where true peace and love reign among all nations and in the hearts of all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gina. You're listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. This is Faith on Trial. We will be back in about two minutes.
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by CTO. Your support has helped thousands of students attend our Catholic schools. CTOiowa.org. At CTO, the bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Thank you, Big Red Q Quick Print, for underwriting the sports report. Family owned and operated since 1980, Big Red Q Quick Print is a full service print shop ready to help you with all your printing needs with speed and accuracy. Forms, manuals, brochures, letterhead, envelopes, business cards, custom invitations, design, and bindery. Big Red Q Quick Print, located across from Merle Hay Mall. Online at bigredq des Moines.com. Big Red Q Quick Print. We make printing easy. Thank you, Confluence Brewing Company, for underwriting Christ is the Answer with Father Ricardo and for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Father Ricardo is featured daily at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. Confluence Brewing Company is located off the bike trail south of Grays Lake, confluencebrewing.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Faith on Trial provided by Paul Martin and Paul Mitchell, owners of Imogene Ingredients. Imogene Ingredients supply specialized feed ingredients for livestock and pet diets to improve maternal and young animal health in both conventional and organic production. And we're back. You're listening to Faith on Trial on Iowa Catholic Radio. And we have with us right now Maggie DeWitty, who is the Executive Director of Iowans for Life. Maggie, how are you? Oh, this works. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we, we're out at the fair. Of course, you know what the fair is like. You've been out here every day. But if, we, we never know if our connections are going to work just right. But right. I'm, I'm, we're glad to hear you. Yes, welcome. Yes. Thank All right. you. Tell us about this constitutional amendment that is floating around the state right now that I guess has passed the first legislative session that it needs to. Yeah, so... So really this whole situation started in the 2017 legislative session when we passed the 20-week abortion ban in our state. And with that, we had a 72-hour waiting period in which Planned Parenthood and the ACLU filed an injunction and lawsuit again. So while the 20-week went into effect, they filed lawsuit against the 72 hours. And when that ruling came back uh, about a year later... The Iowa Supreme Court not only ruled the 72-hour waiting period unconstitutional and an undue burden for women, they took it a step further and said, and we also have a fundamental right to abortion in our Iowa Constitution. Now, if you've read our Constitution, which I'm sure you have, Deacon Mano. I have, yes. (laughs) No such right in our Constitution. So they legislated from the bench and and created law, which is not their job to do. And so the only way we can undo what they did in that ruling is to pass a constitutional amendment. And so, as you said, we were able to pass it this last legislative session. But to pass a a constitutional amendment in Iowa, you have to pass it in two sessions, and then it goes to a vote of the people. And so we're in step one of a, of a multi-step process in order okay. to get this accomplished. All right. So it's going to require quite a bit of organization um, to get people to understand what the amendment is, because I'm sure it'll be misrepresented in the media all over the place. Well, you're right. exactly is there an right. Effort? Yes. We, we have developed a coalition of pro-life leaders um, several years ago, and um, we have been working together, and our top priority is this life amendment. And, in fact, that's what we're educating at our booth at the state fair because Planned Parenthood is already uh, raising money and uh, raising, uh, you know, awareness about this amendment. And uh, so we are going to have to really work hard, and it's going to be a long effort an expensive effort as well to I get this so. amendment passed. 
Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this pro-life coalition that you had mentioned. I know this came into being uh, a couple years ago. A lot of people don't know about that. Why don't you explain a little bit about that coalition and what you're doing and who's part of it and, of course, how people can contact either you or other members of the coalition to get uh, uh, advice on what to do. You bet. So it was actually almost five years ago that the Coalition of Pro-Life Leaders was formed. Um, unfortunately, as is what ha- has happened across the nation, is the pro-life group did not uh, play well together. And so um, this coalition was an attempt to bring community to the pro-life movement in Iowa. And that's exactly what we did. And um, now we have a very unified uh, group. Uh, Iowans for Life is is part of that. The family leader, um, Thomas sure. Moore. Sure, we know those people well, yes. Mm-hmm. Yep, uh, we have Iowa Right to Life. We have a couple post-abortive ministries, um, Restored by Grace and Operation Outcry. And then we have Personhood Iowa and Lutheran Family Services, who does adoption and life work. So those are the main groups in our coalition, and we meet regularly. And that was, like I said, our primary, um, our mission is to get this life amendment up and going. So we were successful for one session, but now we have to we have to gear up for another session and then, of course, a vote of the people. Yeah, well, this is going to be um, an issue, I suppose, in the, the 2022 elections because uh, it's the legislature that convenes in 2023 that's got to pass this, too. Exactly. Right. That's what people are confused about because we have the General Assembly in Iowa, which is two sessions. And so when we passed it this last session, that was the first half of that General Assembly. And so it has to go to that next General Assembly and then a vote. So the earliest um, we'd get on the ballot would be, you know, 2023. Well, 2023 for the next General Assembly, right? Yes. Yes. And then, and then, and then the, and an then election the, in between. <laughs> and and then, uh, yeah, the election is in twenty two, and twenty three yes. the general assembly meets again. And then, if they yes. pass it, then it will go on the twenty four ballot. Is Unless they would have a special session, which they could do. You know, like they're having okay. a special session for redistricting um, here coming up next month. So that's a possibility that they could have a, a special session as well. Um, and get this through. I noticed that the vote of the House was 53-46, which is a uh, a good margin, but not, a, you know, a, a strong margin. Like the Senate was 38-18. So with the elections coming up in 22, I think the Senate vote would probably still be there for you for this uh, House Joint Resolution 5 constitutional amendment. But how do you feel about the uh, House? Do you Are there a lot of seats that would affect this outcome? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. Well, the House gained seats this last time, which helped us tremendously um, in, in garnering the support that we needed to pass this. Um, that was our struggle. Um, you know, we had, the, we had the Senate soared up pretty well, but the House was a struggle. And so then when you have, you know, redistricting coming up and how that's sure. going to affect seats, and then an election, it's really hard to say. Um, we're really, we have our work cut out for us. So many things have to fall in place because if we would lose Republican control of the House or the Senate, God forbid, then um, the likelihood of us being able to get this accomplished would be very, very slim. Wow, that is a lot of work. That is a lot of work, and it will require uh, everyone all constituents, all of your volunteers and all the people of Iowa to to really go vote and w- vote your conscience. That's because right. Because it affects this outcome. That's right. And, and Maggie, if people want to find out more about this or uh, volunteer to assist you in any way, how do they get a hold of uh, Iowans for Life? Well, the easiest way is just jump on our website, iowansforlife.org, and we have a whole legislative page that has up-to-date information about what's going on, but just in general, everything that we have going on. 
We also have a link to our website, the Coalition of Pro-Life Students. And I'm the spokesman for that um, coalition. And we have a separate website that we have a link on our website, too, as well. So if you're interested in, in talking with any of these other pro-life organizations, uh, you can get that link on our website as well. Very good. And then you're still out at the fair, although you're not personally here right now. You're coming out later this afternoon, right? I am. I am. And that's, like I said, what our, we're doing a, a clone kernel uh, poll on whether people would vote for the amendment. And okay. uh, that's what we're trying to do right now is just raise awareness. And we're finding not a lot of people uh, understand what has happened and understand that you know, this 72-hour ruling was our role anyway here in Iowa. I and mean, that's how okay. devastating it was here in Iowa. And people don't realize the impact it has. Okay, and now you're, for anybody who's coming out this afternoon, not only to see you personally, but see your booth, you're in the Varied Industries building. We are. We are in the air-conditioned Varied industry building. <laughs> But it's perfect yeah. for today, really. Yeah. It's yeah. so hot. Like Jean and I are sitting out. Well, we, at least we have shade here where we're at. But it's still it's a little, quite humid today. So yeah. Good for you. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, Maggie, I also noticed that uh, you guys are involved in so many things, but this um, legislature was very good to, to the issues for life. Um, you know, they, they've tried another waiting period, and um, I can't remember if the governor signed it or not this year. Can you update us on some of the things that happened in the legislature that protect life this this last session? Yeah. So what happened in the in the twenty um, actually in the twenty twenty session was we had tried to pass the protect life amendment and were not able to. But in the final hours of the twenty twenty session, they did pass a twenty four hour bill. Of course, Planned Parenthood and ACLU filed lawsuits. <laughs> even, even they got an injunction even before Governor Reynolds signed the bill into law the day before. <laughs> not surprised, so, yes. Not surprising, but yes, he did end up signing that bill into law. But of course, they filed the injunction so that it would not go into effect, and it's currently being litigated right now in the state. So now I notice it in. Because uh, I notice in Texas that they have passed a, a legislation there that uh, you cannot have an abortion after six weeks. And the National Abortion Federation and other abortion providers in Texas have announced that they will not refer for abortions uh, during that time period. Uh, is that something that's growing around the country? Well, it is. We're seeing more and more of it. And, of course, the, the current case in Mississippi... Um, that the U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear on a 15-week ban. That's right, in Mississippi. That could challenge Roe versus Wade, but of course, here in Iowa, we're not in good shape because when Roe versus Wade is overturned, abortion law goes back to individual states. And right, right. now in Iowa, unfortunately, according to our unelected judges, uh, we have a fundamental right to abortion, so that means we can't restrict it in any way. Yeah. So while some states are... That's why this constitutional abortion. amendment is so important. We're running out of time here, Maggie. Yeah. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, and if anybody, want, if want, anybody wants any more information, they can contact yeah. Maggie through oh, Iowans for Life. You, thank you, Maggie, for joining us. We'll have you back again and follow, this, follow up on all this stuff. You bet. Thanks for having me. Certainly. You're Thanks, listening Mindy. to Faith on Trial on Iowa Catholic Radio. We will be right back after these messages. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee and Eddie in the Morning is provided by Blessman International. Blessman International partners with volunteers and donors to provide sustainable programs for children in South Africa by leading a 12-day, all-inclusive experience sharing the heart of Christ with vulnerable children in South Africa. Teams are forming to do something significant in an African child's life. Learn more at blessmaninternational.org. That's blessmaninternational.org. Thank you, Blessman International, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Divine Treasures, a Catholic book and gift store serving the Des Moines community since 1992. Divine Treasures, 5701 Hickman Road, Des Moines, 515-255-5230. Thank you, Divine Treasures, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio.
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and John Lee and Eddie in the Morning provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and the Uncommon Good provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. This is Bo Bonner. And I'm Dr. Bud Marr from the Uncommon Good. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. And you're listening to Faith on Trial on Iowa Catholic Radio. Gina, interesting uh, visit with uh, uh, Maggie here about what's going on with the uh, uh, constitutional amendment. Well, and I would say that we really uh, need to stay on top of this throughout the program because um, it's important to Iowans and it's important to um, to the nation. And um, it's, you, you know, this. I'm glad she brought up the Mississippi Supreme Court case because. Uh, I noticed that there's quite a few amicus briefs there's filed. There's more and amicus briefs filed in that than I've seen in a lot of other cases. Well, yeah. I heard record numbers. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so it, it's important. If I was not ready for a, a, a change, A, we need to re- re-elect and continue to elect uh, pro-life legislators right. um, to protect our rights and also... Um, to uh, be aware and talk to our neighbors about this uh, House Joint Resolution 5, the change to the Iowa Constitution, so that we can really explain to our judges how we feel as Iowans. That's right. That's right. And, of course, there's a lot of stuff coming up, and when we're uh, back in our studios, we're going to be back to uh, more normal programming. Oh, we'll have more lawyers, yes. Lawyers on. It's it's difficult to get somebody who's standing in the... uh, um, doorway of the Supreme Court ready to go in and argue to say, hey, come to the Iowa State Fair. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got we got corn dogs for you, but uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we are following all of these things, and I noticed uh, that um, there was a uh, this contraceptive mandate that was uh, uh, with uh, Obamacare. Right. There was an exception. And the Little Sisters have been fighting right. that since the day that law went into there were the, Well, the University of Notre Dame mm-hmm. received an exemption and that was under challenge. And an Indiana uh, federal court has just dismissed that lawsuit challenging Notre Dame. So I read, uh, you know, that lawyers, they talk in a lot of negatives. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that? Laws and and lawyers. (laughs) So I read that, and I think the bottom line, correct me if I'm wrong, is that Notre Dame must provide. No, Notre Dame Dame wins. They win. win. Okay, I did. It was difficult for me to follow. So well, you have to have Notre Dame sixteen years of schooling and uh, learning how to do double negatives and uh, all that other stuff. Well, that's a good. uh, That was a good turnout then for Notre Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame and for religious liberty. And then uh, I see this other thing here that I thought I'd bring up. Uh, There's a mathematics professor at the University of Michigan who argued in a podcast that the discipline. Of, of mathematics inflicts racism against black and Latino students. She argues that mathematics is dominated by whiteness and racism. Now, I don't know how somebody can come up with that opinion, but... You know, as somebody who studied math my entire life, that is my, my, my background, the statistics and mathematics, uh, there's nothing more beautiful. Um, the, uh, you know, our, everything in our world is based on mathematics, and the more you understand it, the more you understand. Right, because it, it's an exact science. Right, and it explains so much around us. I mean, it, there's so much truth in math, and I really believe that that's intimidating to um, individuals who like to control uh, this this our environment and our policy yeah. um, so uh, I find that by not teaching math would be racist and it would be difficult for our our students to understand their world of course one of the things that we've seen going around the country now is uh, uh, schools and universities that are dumbing down the curriculum instead of elevating it right. and requiring more perfection they dumb it down as if that's going to solve everybody's problem 
I, I don't understand the, the label of racism on a lot of things that we're seeing labeled as racist. We're seeing that all the time now, and I, I guess uh, one of these days somebody's going to call us that word. And uh, oh, I find it to uh, be just an argument-ending phrase. Yeah. You know, uh, walk away. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Take yeah. your toys and, yeah. and leave. Pick up your toys and ball and go. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, that's about the end of our time right now. Um, we will be back next week, back in our studios. So let's end with our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. For Gene and myself, thank you for listening. Join us next week for another edition of Faith on Trial on Iowa Catholic Radio. Until then, have a blessed and peaceful week. Our freedom of conscience and religion is being challenged by laws and regulations imposed by secular society. Faith on Trial with Defender of the Faith, Deacon Mike Mano. Faith on Trial, Thursdays at 10 a.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio, iowacatholicradio.com, and the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Support for Faith on Trial and Iowa Catholic Radio provided in part by Imogene Ingredients.